to, to those many of you Alaskans who are gathered here in the room today. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for coming uh, all the way to Washington, D.C. I know that uh, for some of you, this is the end of, of moose hunting season. I had a group of whalers in uh, my office yesterday who were itching to get back because uh, there was still time to go out and, and get yet uh, another whale for the community of, I think Barrow had not yet gotten all of theirs. Um, our, our reality is, is this is the time of, of gathering for so many uh, of our people. And to take the time to come to Washington, D.C., well, your families, your friends, your neighbors are, are engaged in, in uh, a time of, of subsistence activity preparing for winter is, is greatly appreciated. Now, some have asked about why we're having a subsistence hearing in the Energy Committee. And I think it's important to remind folks that it is this committee that has jurisdiction over ANILCA, the Alaska National Interest Lands Act, and over ANCSA, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act. Um, and Mr. Chairman, I think it's important to, to point out that to my knowledge, a hearing of, of this nature has never occurred in this committee, even though this is the committee of jurisdiction. It hasn't occurred in this committee since the enactment of these statutes uh, decades ago. So with the passage of the statutes nearly 40 years ago now, and the history that has unfolded since then, I would suggest that it's long overdue that we examine whether or not these statutes reflect our priorities as Alaskans today. Now, prior to uh, this, this full committee hearing in Washington, D.C., I have held uh, two public meetings in the state this past year on the issue uh, of subsistence. I was out in the, in the Bethel area, and I was out in the Otna region. The goal of these meetings was for me to listen firsthand, to gather testimony directly from residents of rural Alaska on these issues, understanding that not everyone can make it to Washington, D.C. And even the many of you who made it here to Washington, D.C. will not be invited to testify at the table. Given the relative format and the formal format that we have here uh, for Senate hearings, it just simply doesn't afford everyone who wishes to, to be on the record to do that. And so the purpose of those very public uh, uh, round tables and listening sessions was to gather as much as we possibly can. In both of those, those public meetings that we held, there was much discussion about what subsistence really means. Do we use the word subsistence, or do we refer to uh, customary and, and traditional use? One of, one of the, my strong takeaways was that at the core of the discussion, subsistence is about a way of life, pretty basic, pretty elemental. People our native people around the state identify with a food source. And perhaps unlike any other in any others in the in the country, when you think about the Gwich'in people who identify themselves as, as the caribou people, or the Inupiaq up north who who identify so closely and wholly with the whale, so many identify themselves with, with salmon with moose, as they do in, in the Atna region, Athabascans. So ide to identify your, uh, not only your, your cultures, but really your spirituality with your food source, I think is something that is important when we talk about subsistence, because it is more than just putting food on the table. When we were in Bethel, uh, I heard from many folks who were very troubled, very upset by the low Chinook salmon runs and the subsistence fishing closure, closures that came along with those. The meeting that was in Glen Ellen, up in the Otna region, uh, the issues of, of priority were different than in the YK Delta, but the passion that people spoke to was much the same. And Mr. Chairman, you note that, 
the people in, in, your, in your state, your region, uh, care about what is happening with management of, of our salmon resources. So uh, as we deal with these issues, I think it's important to recognize that it doesn't make any difference what part of the state you are from. The, the passion really is, is very similar. Alaska Natives who continue to hunt and fish in their traditional and customary manners face regulatory and management challenges under the current structure. In the Atna region, we heard so many residents speak about uh, the issue uh, of trespass that's occurring on their lands. Uh, Atna community members on the road system experience what they, they referred to as combat hunting. One elder put it that way, as outsiders compete for the limited hunting opportunities in the region. Mr. Chairman, I do think it is appropriate for me to, to acknowledge on the record my thanks to all those who did uh, speak at, at our uh, public meetings and, and to enter into the record all of those statements um, that we collected, make them part of this official Energy Committee full. Uh, full Without record. objection, that's order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The dual management and differing management regimes on state and federal land causes both confusion and frustration for so many rural Alaska residents. The Federal Subsistence Board was created through regulation and continues to be a point of contention among Alaskans. We recognize in Alaska that the federal government fails to prioritize land management decisions for subsistence to ensure healthy and abundant populations for consumption. And a very direct example of this, and I think we'll hear from, from Mr. Fleener on it, is the situation out on Unimac Island with the caribou population. This is, Unimac is, is located out in the Alaska Maritime National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, when the state attempted to act to ensure that the po uh, caribou populations were not going to be wiped out for subsistence purposes, the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service blocked access to the state and stated publicly that natural selection is, is the best course. This, it's, it's, not a, it's not an acceptable outcome here. Uh, I mentioned before the, the issues of, of trespass. How, how can we work together to find ways to address these? How do we find a way to ensure that residents um, will be able to continue to hunt in their customary and, and traditional manner? Mr. Chairman, uh, I think it's fair to say that over the years, there has been um, heated debate, that's probably a polite way to put it, but subsistence and wildlife management has, has generated a, a great deal of, of contention and frustration and, um, and, and really turmoil at times. And it, it, it has been evident back home, it's been evident here in Washington, D.C. I don't have any illusions that by holding this hearing today, we're going to solve with one fell swoop the issues as they relate to management of our, of our wildlife in this state. But my goals really in, in advancing this hearing are to get this discussion started again, bring the stakeholders together from the government, from the Native community, to educate my colleagues here in, on the Energy Committee uh, and within the Senate to find specific areas of agreement where we can move forward and, and, and address some targeted fixes. We've done a few very, very small things. We've got the Glacier Bay uh, gull egg harvest. We're moving forward on the Tonga Subsistence User uh, Use Cabin Act. We've got the, the duck stamp provision, um, really quite small in scope, um, uh, very small in scope. There's so much that I think we recognize needs to be done, but it can't be done unless we're willing to sit together, listen to one another, engage in a respectful manner, identify the flaws in the, in the laws, and figure out how we can move together, truly, as, as one people with a common goal in mind. 
So with that, Mr. Chairman, I look forward to the testimony from, from uh, those who have joined us here today, not only our, our, our government officials, but the many friends who uh, will step forward and, and provide their words. And again, my thanks to you for, for being a good partner in this and listening.